Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, a heart attack sandwich. Beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and today I'm in Porto, Portugal. In this episode, we're going to take you on a food tour of this incredibly beautiful city, and we're kicking things off with a sandwich tour. Porto is known for its many iconic sandwiches, and we're going to do our best to taste as many of them in this episode. And of course, you can't come to Portugal without tasting the local seafood. So later in the episode, we're going for a seafood barbecue. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Portuguese food. For our first sandwich on our sandwich tour today, we've come to a place called Casa Expresso. They're serving a not so popular, not as popular as the other sandwiches we're going to try, a type of sandwich here. It's called Sunday's Ocho which means a firecracker sandwich. It comes from the northern province of Minho here in Portugal and uh, they braise it or stew it overnight with uh, vino verde, which is green wine, which is also from the north. And this is a really local spot and I've got it right here. It's basically some massive chunk of boneless pork in this beautiful roll. And just look at the generous pork in there. He added some extra sauce as well and this place is just fast and furious he is working there's only one guy here and he's serving everybody let me try out this uh sunday's pocho it's kind of hard to say <laughs> look at the size of the pork on there oh my gosh okay let's go for a bite oh, hot. Oh, so tender oh my gosh i could taste the bay leaf instantly it's just ridiculously juicy, tender pork. And that roll, saturated with all that sauce. Oh my gosh, it's good. It's smoking hot, right out of the pot. Oh. That is a seriously good sandwich. Chase it with a super box. That's how you gotta start your day here in Portugal. Standing at the bar side, eating a meaty sandwich with beer. No complaints. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> meat bug. <laughs> Simply just uh, meat yep. and bread, but it's all about that beautiful sauce that's cooking in right there. Oh my gosh, it's good. And like I was saying, it's not the most famous of the sandwiches we're going to try today because there's some really popular ones here in Porto, but this place is just packed out with locals. I think we're the only tourists here, so that's a good sign. Damn, that was a good start to our sandwich tour. Oh my gosh, that place was good. And it's really kind of a local hidden gem. They don't really have a sign. It's just a tiny little sign. This is Casa Expresso. So you gotta really keep your eyes open for this place. Let's keep going on our sandwich tour. The thing about Porto that is different than other places I've been in Europe is that literally the entire city is beautiful. Like every corner you take, you see another beautiful church or buildings or tiles or fountains. It is an absolutely gorgeous city, probably the most beautiful one I've ever been to in Europe in terms of a city, because it is quite a large city. There's beautiful small towns, but as far as cities go, Porto has got my heart. second sandwich of our sandwich tour here in Porto. We're at a place called Conga and they specialize in bifana, which is a spicy stewed thin strips of pork uh, in like a white wine spicy stew with lemon and he's got two massive pots of it up front. It's served in a dinner roll similar to the one we had earlier and he gives it an extra little dunk in the uh, spicy sauce with the rolls to get it all completely saturated so you can see it's all soaked with that sauce. So 
different than the last one because it's uh, thin, thin strips of pork. Standing counter side again, this is a super popular place. Let's try it. The Bifana is much more famous here in Portugal than the previous sandwich we had, but still not the most famous in Porto, which we'll try later. Let's try this. Really good. Let's get some heat. That's definitely a little spicy. Come out. The thin strips just melt in your mouth though. Pieces of fat in there. And then the roll is just soaked up that sauce. It's spicy. I like it. They're just turning out to be bar. Look at these. That is absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh. It's only gonna last a couple bites. <laughs> Thank you. If we were trying to eat so many different sandwiches today, I totally would have two, maybe three of these. They're so good. Mm. I love the heat. You guys are super friendly here. Been around since 1976. They have all kinds of different things, but the Bifana is definitely their famous one. Yeah. All right, I am getting the impression that Porto knows how to do a sandwich really good. That was two stellar sandwiches back to back. I don't know which one was better, but I do love the spiciness of that place. Whew, that was awesome. A little bit more touristy than the last spot, but still really, really good. Okay, we've got a couple more sandwiches left to go. sandwich of our sandwich tour here in Porto. We are having the most iconic of all sandwiches to have in Porto. Probably the most iconic food you must eat in Porto if you ever visit. We've come to a place called Cafe Santiago which is famous for their Francesina sandwich. So the story of the sandwich goes that a Portuguese man living in France was uh, inspired by the French croque monsieur and some other uh, French hot sandwiches. And then when he came back to Portugal or to Porto, he invented a sandwich called the Francesina, which means the little French girl. And this is it right here. This thing is a heart attack on a plate. Let me try to break this down for you. So basically, it is cheese enveloping a sandwich of uh, bread, steak, uh, ham, and linguiça sausage. And then the sauce. The sauce is the key here. The sauce is a beer sauce. So sometimes they'll use like tomato. Every establishment has their own recipe, but the one thing that remains the same is it is a beer-based sauce. And I'm gonna try to cut this thing open. This is an absolute monster of a sandwich. It's almost intimidating. I'm gonna try to cut it open so I can show you all those different ingredients. The steak, the ham, the sausage. <laughs> Look at all that cheese on top. Pry this open, see if I can show you all of those ingredients. Yes, there you go. So you can see, we've got ham, we've got steak, we got sausage on the bottom, two pieces of bread, tons and tons of sauce, and then cheese all over it. And guess what? He even gave us a pitcher of uh, more sauce. Like it really needs it, but you know, why not? Why not? We're already here. This thing, like I said, is the iconic dish, the most famous dish of Porto that you must try. It's gonna be my first time trying it. It's honestly intimidating. So many ingredients. Let's try it. I'm gonna give it a big bite. Try to get everything all in one. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Wow. 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 All right, let's give it a try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god. That sauce is absolutely killer. It's a little tangy. You can taste like a little tomato in there, I'd say. I can't say you can taste the beer, but it's like a thick gravy almost. And you get so much cheese, so much everything, but you can feel the different layers though. You can you can actually taste everything individually, even though it's all smothered in that sauce. Man, I could see myself eating this at like 3 a.m. after a long night of drinking. It's just falling apart, destroying it. Look at it, there's a whole steak in there. <laughs> That's crazy. This thing is a monstrosity of a sandwich, but you gotta try it here in Porto. That's good, it is good. I wish I was more hungry. <laughs> Mm. Mm. That sauce is phenomenal. It really makes the dish the sauce. 
The cheese is actually good quality cheese too. Yum. Steak in there. You got everything. Holy smokes, look at that. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, a heart attack sandwich. Mm. All right, my turn to try this. Mm. Interesting taste. I mean, if you are a cheese or meat lover, this dish is a perfect, uh, perfect dish for you. Could you eat a whole one by yourself? <laughs> I don't think so, but if I'm so hungry in the morning, maybe I can. But we just came from like two sandwich shops, so it's heavy. Actually, really good though. Man, that is the mother of all sandwiches. So heavy, but really, really tasty. You have to try it in Porto, the Francesina, the iconic dish of Porto. That wraps up our little sandwich tour this morning, but we're not done eating. We are going to do a bit of sightseeing though to uh, digest, get a little hungry before we go for some seafood this evening. <laughs> to take a little break and let our stomachs digest a bit at this incredible cafe. It's called Majestic Cafe, and that is the most suitable name because this place is certainly majestic. It was built in 1922, and this is voted one of the most beautiful cafes in the world. Think Starbucks meets the Palace of Versailles. That's what this place looks like. It is intricate to say the least. All these carvings, wood carvings, these big mirrors, the facade at the front of the building is absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if the coffee's gonna be any good. It's five euros for a latte. Let's try it. Oh yeah. Nope, not very good at all actually. It's lukewarm at best, <laughs> kind of cool. This is more of a place to come and just take in the views, soak up the atmosphere. It's definitely touristy, but it is absolutely beautiful, incredibly beautiful inside here. Man, that's not a good latte at all. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this latte does taste just like water pretty much, but still 10 out of 10, totally recommend. So beautiful in here, what do you think? Maybe the most beautiful cafe I've been in. Like it looks, it looks like we're in the palace.
one place you must visit here in Porto is the train station. That's right, the Sao Bento train station. It's protected by UNESCO because it's probably the most beautiful train station in the entire world. There are more than 20,000 of these blue and white tiles adorning the walls of this incredibly magnificent train station. It's still a functional train station. You can hear the announcements for the train departures happening right now, and they depict all these scenes of ancient Portugal. It's just an incredibly beautiful place. It's more than a train station. It's really a uh, tourist attraction. They started building it in 1904. It opened in the 1920s, and you have to visit this. Everything in Porto is beautiful, even the train station. All of the tiles were individually hand-painted by only one man. Definitely the most beautiful train station in the world. That was the Porto Cathedral, the main cathedral here in Porto and another major uh, sightseeing spot in the city and the inside is just as beautiful as the outside. It's Sunday so they're having Sunday Mass. So Porto is built on a big hill. We just headed all the way down the hill and at the bottom of the hill you'll find the River Douro, which is famously known for uh, transporting Porto's famous port wine. We're going to cross the river to the other side, across the beautiful bridge and take in the beach. So from the other side of the bridge, we took just a 10 minute taxi to a small town or a little village that's called Afurada. It's a fishing village and we've come here for seafood. You can't leave Portugal without tasting the local fresh seafood. And I heard that Afurada has some of the best seafood in all of Porto. So let's go order some up. So this little fishing village is famous because they have all of these seafood barbecues or seafood grills, charcoal grills. The streets just fill up with smoke and they're grilling up all kinds of different seafoods. But you definitely gotta try the sardines. The famous dish here is the sardines. So we were sat down at a really popular spot right on the side of the road. And we've got two different appetizers before our grilled sardines arrive. So the first is a uh, cold uh, octopus dish. It's a sliced up octopus with a green sauce. It's like a parsley green sauce with olive oil. And then these over here are uh, cod fritters. So fried cod bacalao, which is also super famous here in uh, Porto and Portugal. Let me try one of these guys out first. Mm. Mm, a big chunk of cod in there. Really big. Nice crunch to it. And chase it with the local vino verde, which is a green wine. It's like a sparkling wine. Oh, yum. Okay, let's try this octopus too. Just smothered in parsley, olive oil, some salt. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. There's a beautiful texture to it. And the smell of the smoke is making my mouth water. I can't wait to try these sardines. Oh, the octopus is awesome. The sauce on it. Yum. We have our beautiful grilled sardines and they're served with potatoes. The, the waiter was just telling me how to uh, do it properly here in Portugal. So you take the, the potato and then kind of smash it down, kind of mash it, and there's a sauce that's provided. It's like a parsley vinaigrette with uh, garlic right here. Over this on top. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. And then let me grab one of these guys. All right. And then try to get some of the meat, and then you eat it together with the potatoes and that green sauce. Green sauce, green wine, and then green here. Let's try that. Oh, that looks amazing. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. With that sauce and the potatoes, so creamy. Super fresh sardines. You can just crunch the bones up too. They're small enough. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, it is all about that green sauce. Beautiful fresh sardines too. Just add some extra sauce here. Oh my god, that is so good. Sour from the vinaigrette, garlicky, yum. So good. Super smoky sardines too. Very fresh. If there's one fish you gotta try here in Portugal, it's gotta be the sardines. I am in love with this sauce. You can go so generous too. It works so well with the sardines and the potatoes. And really affordable seafood here too. Just eight euros for four sardines. And the side dishes, I think, were, like the octopus was only like 350 euros. It's really, really affordable. And very fresh. You gotta go outside the center of the town to get good prices like that. Such a nice change after all those sandwiches. Whew. Wow. <laughs> that was some incredible seafood, and they have something for dessert that I just absolutely could not pass up. It's their creme brulee of the house. And the way that they do it is so cool. They heat up an iron um, kind of plate that they sear the top of the creme brulee or they brand it like a cattle and it just smokes and this is the final result and it's created this beautiful caramel top. Oh my gosh, that was so cool, so smoky. Branding it just like a, like a cow. That is so cool, never seen that before. Let's try it. <laughs> wow, we might need to get two of these. Oh, got a crunchy caramel top. Super creamy creme brulee. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. Sorry, Mink, I don't think there's gonna be any left for you. Oh, that's amazing. That's the best thing ever. I can't stop. I'm serious, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. No, I can't. I am loving Portugal. The people are friendly, the prices are very reasonable, the weather is great, and the food is absolutely delicious. So we're going to catch the cable car, taking the views on our way back to the Centro Historico here in Porto. Ready? Let's go! So this cable car takes you up to the top part of the bridge. That bridge is actually two parts. It's a bottom part and a top part that you can walk on. And it, the bridge's name is Pont Luis I. It was actually made, designed by Gustav Eiffel, the guy who made the design for the Eiffel Tower, of course. I guess you can kind of tell because the uh, iron worker, whatever it is, I think iron, sort of looks similar to the Eiffel Tower. That's it for today's episode here in Porto. This city is absolutely beautiful. It has my heart as probably the most beautiful city I've ever seen in my entire life. I love it here and the food is great. The people are super friendly. We had an incredible time. We ate a lot of sandwiches. We had some awesome seafood, some awesome dessert. It was a great day. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye. Bye.